I have to say on a, this beautiful morning with so many friends among us, I, I do still feel a burden in my heart of this terrible week in the news of the atrocities happening in Aleppo, in Syria. It's hard to look and just not have your heart break. Sometimes it's just easier to turn your head away. Or the crisis of global warning, or dare I say the potential result of the upcoming U.S. election. Sometimes one can't feel help but feel a sense of hopelessness. And sometimes we can get weighed down too by our own burdens, our own frustrations, missed hopes, expectations. And then every now and then we are gifted by something or someone who puts things in perspective. If you ever actually have the chance to speak to a refugee family and hear their story, or spend a little time at one of our community ministries and witness the courage, the spirit within folks who have been handed a very different set of cards. These folks, these gifts, help us see beyond ourselves. They move us, they shake us, they confront us, they crack open our hearts, our awareness is expanded, and bring us to choose a different path than the one we are traveling. Well, today we're remembering St. Francis of Assisi, beloved saint, a 13th century Italian whose life was a true witness of Christian discipleship. Francis shows us what bearing the gentle yoke of Christ looks like. Francis was graced with a confrontation, an awareness that transformed his life. Francis grew up in a wealthy family, and his days were spent indulging in the leisures of a spoiled, hedonistic brat. But in his opulent, irresponsible life, God confronted Francis as a leper. Christ met him as a leper. And Francis was astonished to be encountered with the suffering of another human being, a person just like him. And in this relationship, his own self-centeredness was illuminated and sent his world into a tailspin. In discovering his smallness, his heart was opened to the vastness of God's love and mercy. He renounced his family's wealth, became a men mendicant, and spent his days serving the poor and the sick. Go make disciples of all nations, he said, but only use words if absolutely necessary. Francis chose to follow a different path than the one he was following. You also may know of Francis as a wonderful, uh, with wonderful modeling abilities, posing often for lawn and garden ornament sculptures. <laughs> he, he's often portrayed with birds or holding a bowl of water. You can see them all over the neighborhood. But you see, joking aside, Francis shared an awareness of the vastness of a God who enfolds and is within all creation. The universe, for Francis, is the imprint of God. And the only response for the human being with such an awareness is to care for all, especially the little ones. So, so today, in, uh, often in many places, and right here, we're going to have a blessing of animals, which for many people is kind of a bit of an odd thing. What exactly are we doing anyway? What, how is God in creation, and, and what are we doing when we bless an animal? What, what is it that we're doing? So I just wanted to give a couple of thoughts, something for us to think about as we prepare to do something, uh, something very sacred. Well, Elia Delio, who some of you may know of, uh, she's a theologian, notes that when we look at the vast sweep of evolution and the complexities 
of the emergent biological life. We see that the human person is not a chance arrival, but an integral element of the physical world. We humans have really only been here for about 0.04%, not even 1%, 0.04% of the 4.5 billion years of the Earth's existence. And we are the most physically complex and most highly synthesized form of matter in the whole universe. It's an amazing thing to think about that. Well, Tillard de Chardin, some of you also may know, would place the human being above all other conscious beings known to us in all of evolution. But the thing that's unique about the human being who rises out of creation is that we reflect on that process and therefore stand apart from it. Julian Huxley would say, man is nothing else than evolution become conscious of itself. The human person is the point of emergence in nature with this deep cosmic evolution culminates and declares itself, made in the image and likeness of God. Well, here's another, Michael Dowd puts it this way. We are stardust that has begun to contemplate the stars. Four billion years ago, our planet was molten rock, and now it sings opera. But the most astonishing thing of all of this is that God's evolutionary process, the way God creates, is now conscious of itself and participates now participates consciously in its ongoing evolution. Consider that. That, friends, is what freedom is and what we, our, what we are. This is the crown that we wear as made in the image of God. This freedom to participate consciously in our future and in evolution itself. So Francis would claim that this destination, the destination of the human person, is Christ. Jesus shows us what a true human being is and the cross as the road to arrive there. Jesus is our destination, and yet it would seem, friends, that we are but babes on the journey. Just look at the news, how we tarnish these great crowns of glory in our little sandbox as the universe is waiting for us to grow up. So today we are remembering St. Francis, who confronted by the suffering of the world around him, renounced his own self-centeredness and chose to walk a different path, to serve God in the other. He chose to bear the gentle yoke and easy yoke of Christ. And who is this Christ with whom we share our yoke with? What is this easy yoke? Who do we share it with? It is the poor and the leper, the little ones. And the world that we are called to take care of and protect. So in a few moments... We're going to bless our animal friends, these beautiful intentions of God, these beings we share our life with, and who become for us reflections of God's love for creation, his unconditional outpouring of himself. Surely every flower, every beast breathes his name and reflects the mystery of God among us. So as we bless our pets, friends, we do not do it just as a cute moment, and it will be very cute, or, nor is it to just affirm our privilege at even having the opportunity to own a pet and care for a pet, but we do so with humility, wearing the crowns as servants of creation, stewards of the tender sacredness of life. And I pray that as we do, and as we welcome, as we come to the table to receive God's life in flesh and blood, the stuff of creation, we remember St. Francis 
and we remember the children of Aleppo and our wounded planet, and that we use this crown of freedom to choose to follow a different one than the one we seem to be following.